everyone. Welcome back to the Cell Seed Podcast. My name is Emmanuel. I'm the host of the Cell Seed Podcast. And today, this is season three, and today we are on episode 11. And today I have with me Jennifer Richards. And today we are going to see the power of transformation. We are going to see how to unlock your transformation. And Jennifer is one of the professionals in that area. Mm -hmm. So I hope you're ready. I hope you uh, listen while you're listening to this, whatever you're doing, I hope you grab a thing or two from this conversation. Welcome back and just sit back, relax. And if it is you're listening on, uh, on your AirPods, on anything, just try to increase the volume so that you may grab everything from the conversation. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, Jennifer. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me, Emmanuel. The so long awaited podcast oh, episode. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it has been like forever. I was like, when is it going to get here? Mm. But yeah. I'm glad to have you today on the podcast. Thank you for accepting the invitation and thank you for uh, appearing. Happy Women's Day. Thank you so much to my, my women out there. Wonderful job, being sisters. Glad to have you. All right. So uh, before we even go anywhere, before we start moving and so on, I would like you to introduce yourself so that the listener or the, the person watching the audience will get to know you. And if they have anything, they will prepare their enthusiasm to go along with you because I believe <laughs> they are ready to role welcome yes hi everyone i'm jennifer richards wilson and i'm from the beautiful tranquil island of jamaica in the caribbean i am the last of six children i am an author educator certified life coach speaker mentor and the list goes on i currently live in china with my son and I teach at an international school. It's my pleasure. It's, 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 it's great to be here. And I am so enthused to have all of you listening to this chat at this time. Thank you. Thank you for uh, sharing with us the little, if not too much, because I know you wear, <laughs> many, you wear many hats and you do a lot, a lot. And I guess I'm yeah. saying this from a perspective of only being an observer watching from the from the corners. So as we get into the conversation, the first thing that uh, I, I am wondering, since you I know you, uh, since the first time you were notified, I notified you about the podcast, mm. uh, was based on looking at your works, looking at what you do, looking at how you do it. And one thing that stuck to me was how do you define transformation? Like what it is in your own words, because I know you, that's the, like the core of what you do. You're a transformation coach. So how do you define transformation? Yes. I'm also the founder and CEO of the Transform Global Services, which See. holds the Transforming Lives Coaching Center and the Transform Leadership Foundation. I can define transformation using the example of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. Mm -hmm. It is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. Right. It's a process of unbecoming, unbecoming what your culture says, unbecoming what your past says about you. It's unbecoming your limiting beliefs, unbecoming what people expect of you and taking on the role, taking on a new identity of becoming the best version of yourself. Again, it doesn't happen overnight. It takes consistency. It takes grit, resilience, and um, so much more. But the, 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 the process is worth it. It's worth the wait. And as you can see with the beautiful butterfly that that evolves out of this caterpillar. Its wings are resplendent. It can mm -hmm. fly, it can move. It has become the best version of itself. And that's what transformation is all about. So essentially it is, the uh, transformation, it is like the growth, 
moving from one one stage to another and it's more than growth mm. it's, it's change but not change in the sense of like the seasons change it is an evolution starting first in the mind because that's where everything starts your mm. mind is your most powerful tool it's your most powerful weapon mm. and that is where it all begins you win or lose first in your mind mm. if you want to change first change your mind change your thoughts right. change how you view things change your perspective and everything will work itself out it starts from within and manifests outside mm -hmm. so along along that line there is like things that will die that are killing of the old self yes definitely there are things that you you'd have to say goodbye to and sometimes there are people you'd have to say goodbye to mm. as well because when you begin to evolve you have to shed that old that, those, those old beliefs that old self that right. old mindset Mm. taking on a new persona one that um wants to believe in growth and development and inspiration and empowerment right and sometimes yes you have to say goodbye mm. why why do i feel like you you have a a story behind you that inspired your curve of of be, uh, be, becoming do you do you have a powerful story that uh, inspired this change or this um uh focus into always seeking transformation in your life and even inspiring it in others everyone has a story i believe in the power of stories mine began um on my living room floor actually my mm. husband had just walked out on myself and my two-year-old son mm. and um i sat there he had come with a moving van and he had taken everything out of the house right. he had no bed no fridge no pots no curtains no pans nothing right. and i looked at the shambles of my life i looked at the all that i had imagined my life should be like i had followed all the rules i had walked according to how you know my the, the church expected of me people expectations my family's expectations of me mm. i got married i had my degree had my son i had the nice house <laughs> and the wide picket fence but then my life shattered all right and so here here i was sitting on my living room floor with the glasses around me you know my expectations shattered mm. and i was sitting there and i had reached a point where i i was facing i was so humiliated i was lost and i was having suicidal thoughts right i wanted to take my own life because this this, this is this was far beyond what i could imagine or even <laughs> it hurt it hurt like hell it did mm. but then i thought of my son he was sleeping on the bed and i i thought of him and i said i don't want to leave him in this world so i being a planner <laughs> i had a knife in my hand and that was when i had planned to just end it all the pain was too much the heartache was too much my marriage had fallen apart and i didn't know what to do than to just end the pain and I could hear the enemy in my ear saying, yes, end it. It will, it will be so good. You won't have to feel this again. You won't, you won't have to go through the, 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 all the agony again. Just to do it. And I was determined to do it at that point in time until Jesus showed up in the room. And I knew him the moment he showed up in the room. Hmm. I had grown up in church. I had done all that was expected of me. I was so active, but I did not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Right. When he showed up in the room, he said to me, give me your pain and I will give you peace. And that is what I did. Hmm. And my prayer through that moment was, Lord, give me beautiful ashes. And when I allowed him to take my pain, take my 
I got to take my shame. Right. He gave me beautiful ashes. He began to work on my mind. He broke apart what I imagined myself to be. And it was, it was, it was painful because change sometimes is painful because you have to say goodbye to who you thought you were and you have to welcome this new person. So over the years, my life changed. He changed my life. He transformed my life. Mm. He changed, he turned my life completely around. Right. And after a couple of years, I decided um, to, to leave Jamaica. And I, I looked for jobs in the US, Canada, UK, but all the doors closed. And I said to, to God, any door you open, Lord, I will walk through that door. And the door to China opened. And I was like, God, <laughs> are you serious? China is like the other part of the world, different language, different everything. But he taught me that life begins outside your comfort zone. That's where true life begins. So I took the step in 2019 and my life has never been the same, never been the same since I arrived in China. My entire life has just changed. I completed my master's in management, mm -hmm. which led me to be exposed to coaching and NLP. So I said I, I, I had made the choice to help other women like myself who had gone through these stages of depression, separation, divorce, infidelity, <laughs> you know, um, despising oneself. And um, I wanted to help women like myself. So I went into coaching. I did my certificate at a university in, in the U.S., and I moved from there to, to, to be an NLP practitioner. Mm. And the rest, as we say, is history. My coaching practice, um, you know, it, 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 it evolved out of my pain. Mm. And I began to write as well. I became an author. And everything just started to unfold. Becoming again like the butterfly, going through the transformation, going through the process of becoming the best version of myself. And it's ongoing. I'm not there yet, but the journey is so exciting because when I look back at my life and I see, I look back 10 years ago, five years ago, six years ago, and I can, I, I am saying, Jen, is this you? Is this really you? I can hardly recognize myself now because I become a totally different woman. I know myself now, I'm assertive, I'm driven, I'm resilient, mm -hmm. and I wasn't like, like that before. Now I know who I am and who I want to become. That's beautiful. The journey that's, continues. That's just nice. Yeah. Out of pain comes beauty. So he gave me beauty for ashes, mm. and I see beauty in my life every day as I talk to women as I try to help them to cope with loss and depression. Beauty comes out of that. Yeah, I, I, that's, that's, um, <clears throat> that's powerful. And mm -hmm. I'm feeling that uh, it is a story, as you say, every story is worth sharing. And that's, course, I think that's yeah. one of the things that we embrace here on, on the Self Seed Podcast. And your story is just incredible and nice. And it is at one point a motivation, an inspiration for someone who is uh, willing and is uh, maybe lost somewhere, knowing that mm -hmm. you didn't you didn't give up. And mm -hmm. even when you, you felt like you lost yourself, you got strength, you were strengthened by Jesus from somewhere, you know, that mm -hmm. experience with Jesus and you felt like, oh, there's more to life than this moment. Mm -hmm. There's more to life than this stop here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know. That's for what people, he does. For people, for people that have, have, uh, you have had uh, that near death experience and then you experience Jesus, I, it's just miraculous. 
it leaves a i think jesus like puts a stamp on you and mm -hmm. it just never goes away which is let, yeah mm. let me tell you uh, he uh. loves women like like me mm. i resonate with those women in the bible mm. the woman at the well yeah, the yeah, woman yeah. caught in adultery mm -hmm. mary magdalene because i was that woman so I believe he has a soft spot for women like me, the broken women like me. He 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 loves us with a, with a special kind of love. And when we allow him in into all the broken parts of us, he mends us with his love and shows us how to love him, how to love ourselves, and how to love others. Right. Yeah. That's nice. That's beautiful. I mean, your story is powerful. And I'm sure for the listener listening right now, and maybe for, for the one who is watching this, uh, I get to learn. I don't know if you're getting to learn, but whatever that you're going through, just know that there is uh, a tomorrow which can be better than right now. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'm just learning from Jennifer not to just give up immediately when you're going through difficulties, no matter how difficult it is no matter how lost you feel, I feel like Jesus can just get you anywhere you are. And that strength is extraordinary once you get out of that uh, pit that you're in. Because yeah. it says, even, even though I shall walk in the valley of shadows, I shall not fear because you are with me. So that means if he holds your hand, he'll never let go unless you you would try to go away but he he won't he won't let you go and uh, i think this uh, makes me think after deciding to go on this transformation journey right uh it has been it started and it's how it has always been jesus right and oh, you're yes. pushing you're pushing through every day and when you look at mm -hmm. yourself over the years you you you're like i'm um, is this still me? Mm -hmm. The changes, mm -hmm. right? You're admiring the changes, the transformation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Always. not to be um, not to be pessimistic, but let's say you face uh, limitations, right? Hindrances on this journey that you decide to uh, become a butterfly, <laughs> but at the same time, there are predators. There are birds who want to, mm -hmm. to, to, to eat you while you're a caterpillar. And let's say uh, even a butterfly can be a prey, right? How do you overcome challenges? What are, are first the challenges that one can face once they decide to, let's say, climb this mountain of transformation, really wanting to be transformed? Because we all always um, have some things that we, we aspire or we admire or a way that we want to be, but yeah. it just doesn't, you know, doesn't work for everybody. So doesn't work for everybody it means people face uh, some challenges along the way and they give up, mm. right? They don't go on. They're like, this is not me. Oh, I can't do this anymore. So how did you, uh, uh, for the challenges that you know already, can you share with us? And how did you overcome these challenges? Or even if you know challenges that people practically face, well, the first thing is that you can look at challenges in mm. a different way. We call mm. it reframing. Mm. If you have a challenge that you're faced that mm. you're you're facing at this moment, right? You have to ask yourself, what is this trying to teach me? What do I have to learn from this? And no situation is permanent. Correct. Everything is temporary. But hope is everything. So if you look at that challenge, what does this have to teach me in this moment? What do I need to learn? Challenges come to teach us a lesson. They come to stretch us, stretch our faith, stretch our creativity. <laughs> Let me tell you, I have found that in my most challenging times, that's when I become more more creative than I've ever been before. Right. That's when my creative uh, creativity flows. That's when I begin to write poetry and I begin to create magnificent work and projects and programs in the midst of my challenges. Right. Because I see them as 
opportunities to grow, to shed something else within me, to shed another part of me. Because if you really want to become transformed, it's a, it's a, it's a continuous process right. of unbecoming, of shedding something that no longer serves you. Right. So whatever challenges I'm facing, I ask myself, what is it that I need to learn in this moment? What is this trying to teach me? I reframe it. I look at it from a different a different angle, different perspective. What do I need to learn from this? How do I need to grow? And I try to find ways <laughs> to grow through that challenge. Either I need to build this skill, I need to build my resilience, I need to um, practice mindfulness. Mm -hmm. I do all of those things to, to, to see the challenge in a way that will enable me to grow through it. It's difficult, but challenges, they don't come to stay. But mm -hmm. when they do come, see them as opportunities for growth, not to deter you, but sometimes to move you into a new direction. Right. Sometimes for you to find that part of you that you didn't know exist before and to move into that kind of realm. So they are good. They're not always bad. Whatever you're facing today, it's not permanent. But ask yourself, what do I need to learn? Who, I, who do I need to become? Who do right. I need to unbecome? <laughs> what do I need to let go of? So we can see challenges, you know, these, these obstacles in a different light. That's that's uh, that's nice the way you put it into only one key word on how to overcome the challenges and that is to reframe, mm -hmm. reframe, reframe, reframe the way you see challenges. Look at them afresh as opportunities. What what is the real intention of the challenges? Yeah. What is it bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. Because I mean, if you look at it, perhaps we always say mm -hmm. there are some challenges prepared intentionally. Let's say mm -hmm. we have we, we just finished the Aussie Fit February challenge, mm -hmm. and when you decide even to look at the challenges that come to life the same way as those, um, they have an objective with them. Yes. We had an objective was to transform people's lifestyle throughout the month of February. So it means even those challenges that we face in the journey, they have an intention. They have a um, uh, a thing they are carrying, a, a purpose they are carrying. And mm -hmm. you, you just reminded us they, they <clears throat> pass. Yes. They pass. They don't last. And yes. we should rather see them like real uh more of, uh, of opportunities mm -hmm. and do you think do you think along the journey of this transformation for someone who's already inspired or motivated and they want to change la their life do you think at some point mm -hmm. they lose you might lose um you might lose uh, what how to say clarity or the focus of of where you're going because mm -hmm. you feel lost you're like mm -hmm. ah. it happens it happens mm -hmm. So when this happens, you take a step back. Mm. You take a step back from where you are mm. in, in that position mm. and you reevaluate. That is why you practice meditation, journaling, mm. breathing exercises. You take a step back mm. <laughs> and you, you evaluate, where am I now? How did I reach here? Mm. Where do I want to go? It's important. Reflection is very, very important. Whatever, you, whatever you're doing, right. always reflect. Right. Take some time to stop what you're doing. Take a step back. Evaluate the picture. Look again. See clarity. Is this what I wanted? What is my why? Go back. Always go back to your why. Mm. You know, Simon Sinek always reminds us. Yeah. Start with your why. Why did I start this project in the first place? Go back to your why. And find your center, find your why, refocus and start again. I've been through so many challenges in my life. When I lost my father, I thought that my entire world had stopped. We were very close. He was the only stable man in my life. And he died. Mm. And I was devastated. And I was in China. It was after the pandemic. I couldn't go home. And I couldn't attend his funeral. And I thought, thought that my, my entire world, again, had just fallen apart. 
but do, but during that time, I wrote my first book, My Father's Heart. Yeah, I listened to that on your heart. podcast. Yes. And that, I found peace, I found solace, I found comfort, I found strength in that moment to write that book. I know that book has sold so many copies because persons can resonate <laughs> with losing someone. Right. And after I lost my sister um, to cancer, I wrote my journal, my multilingual grief journal. Right. Dealing with grief, dealing with with, with, with loss. Mm. So those challenges caused me to take a step back, to reflect. What do I need to learn? What is my why? Go back. And through those challenges, I found the strength to write, to journal, to launch even more um, interactive programs for women who have gone through loss. And of course, to help other persons. So every to every challenge, there is a, a season of reflection. Hmm. What is this teaching me? Let's go back. Let's take a step back, reevaluate, go again. That's that's very nice. That's very uh, useful, I guess, uh, as you put it. As <clears throat> when we face challenges, we have to be able to reevaluate. Even when we lose clarity, we still yes. need to be able to reevaluate and it's like refocus mm -hmm. on the original goal. Yeah. Yeah. It, 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 it even sharpens your, your, your vision because when you reflect on your why, you uh, get new strength to move mm -hmm. along the way. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's very useful. But then I, I wanted to, to tip in into that question. I had another question. What if uh, people are ready to be transformed, right? Let's say I am ready to be transformed, but there are habits that you feel like they have already, they're already stuck, you know? Mm. And you have turned and you know that habit after a certain period of time, if it continues, it becomes a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So how do these kind of people that are willing, you know, uh, as they, Let's say, as the Bible says, the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. It can't. <laughs> the body can't allow. They are always in fighting. Let's say in those in, in that uh, view, how can someone now overcome those challenges? For me, mm. um, as I said before, everything mm. starts in your mind. That's where you win or lose. Right. So. Your habits are formed by your thoughts. Correct. And if you have neg negative thoughts, you have negative habits. Correct. And um, so if you, if, you, if you have this habit that you want to get rid of, think about what, what's the thought behind this habit. What's the thought? What's, what, what's the emotion behind this habit? And do I really want to break this habit? Because... You have to get so fed up mm. with this habit that you that you really want to change it. If you if you won't change what you tolerate, so if you accept this habit and you tolerate mm. it, and you will never change it. You have to get angry enough to say, "Listen, I will not live like this. This is not working for me. This is enough." You have to reach a point where you say, "This is enough, enough." that's when the change will, become, will, will come. The change starts in your mind. Change your thoughts. Your habits will change as well. Your thoughts direct your habits, behavior, actions, lifestyle. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Where the mind goes, the man follows. Hmm. Wherever you, your mind goes, your body, your thoughts, your habits, your actions will follow. So where is your mind? So think about what you're thinking about. Think about what you're thinking about. Yes, think about what you're thinking about. Is this going to help me? Do I really want to get rid of this habit? 
is this habit serving me or is it destroying me? Right. No one can change another person. You are the only one who can change yourself. <laughs> we can have these podcasts. We can have these webinars. But if you are not fed up enough with your lifestyle to start this journey mm. of transformation, you remain where you are. You remain where you are. You remain stuck. You remain stuck. So think about what you're thinking about. Be fed up enough to say, you know what? This is enough. Enough is enough. I have to change this today. And then you find the how. Because when you find the why and the what, find the how. Mm. How am I going to change this habit? Do I need to see a coach? Do I need to see a therapist? Do I need to see a counselor? You find people in your community who will help you to break that habit and to develop better habits. Mm -hmm. That's that's good. I, I like the way you, you put the, the, and I put it as a quote that you won't change if you tolerate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You need to find a point where you say enough is enough. And this this um, reminds me about uh, the process I read in, in in a certain book. I think it was uh, Purpose Driven Life by Chris Warren. Mm -hmm. And he, he, he the way he was, uh, Pastor Rick Warren, the way he, he explained it, he said the process of how <clears throat> sin becomes sin, it starts with a thought and it's not mm -hmm. uh, a bad thing to think. But the more you, you allow the thought to inhabit in your mind, it, mm -hmm. it pushes now you from only thoughts it gives a baby to actions that's it because uh and especially it comes in when, when like let's say you are uh, you are idle it means your mind is not thinking of anything else mm -hmm. you're not challenging your mind with anything else so it definitely moves to action and action leads to i mean the end is is known and the cycle will keep will mm -hmm. continue repeating mm -hmm. if you repeat the pattern mm -hmm. if you always expose yourself so i like the way you you explained it that you that won't is change why you if you think about what you're thinking about. Right. You think mm -hmm. about what you're thinking about. That's mm -hmm. very nice. But then uh, on, on the same hand, uh, yeah. for a person who wants to, uh, to look at, to find transformation, right? Uh, how do you, do you have like certain tools or tips that someone can follow into, into the journey? that they can use to unlock their journey? Are there like special tips, exercises that people can follow? <laughs> well, um, as a coach, we see clients as individuals. Right. Not all tools or tips will work with everybody. Correct. We approach individuals as unique individuals. Right. So after we invite you for a discovery session, mm. we see, okay, what will work best? And of course, powerful questions. Coaches ask questions. Mm. We don't give you advice. Mm. We don't say this is it. This is it. this is this are the seven steps you need to take. Mm. We ask questions, powerful questions that will evoke your thought process to find the answers that you already have within yourself. So these questions, to me, are most powerful. They are the most powerful tools because when you start asking the the right questions, right. you will arrive at the answers that you seek. Of course, we have different tools that um, that we use to help clients to begin transformation. Mm. And again, I believe in journaling. Right. If if you if you do if you practice journaling in the morning, you track in, you, you you track your thoughts. What do you think about first thing in the morning? Right. What what do you think about at noon in the evenings? All of those can help you to see your behavior over time. Is this behavior, is this who I want to be? Who am I portraying? What do I need to change? Right. How mm. can I go about um, arriving at this at, at this change? So, and there are multiple tools online. There are a variety of tools. But when you reach a point where you start asking these powerful questions, mm. the client the individual will find the answers that they seek. And sometimes we know the answers, but again, when we come and we, we, we speak to coaches and counselors, mm. um, we, we find that, hey, 
I knew what I needed to do before. I just didn't know how. And that's where we come in and we use all these tools to help you, to help you um, to, um, to be transformed. To be transformed. That's nice. That's nice. I love the way you, you just uh, put a, a caution. You just put a label out there. Guys, all these tools, they don't work for everybody. That's why yeah, it, uh, you need, uh, every person needs to in, to be some, I think it needs to be curated for individual mm -hmm. specific people. Mm -hmm. And I, I just, you gave us a very useful thing as to you, you have to constantly ask questions. Yes. When you question yourself and how can you question yourself is by journaling. You keep track of your life and you may be able to question if the patterns are, con if it's a long-term pattern, you, you will be able mm -hmm. to question, is this what I really want to become? Mm -hmm. Thank you for, for that uh, uh, food for thought. And uh, the next uh, thing I'm thinking in my mind right now is mm -hmm. what makes your coaching philosophy unique? Because you are a coach and I'm pretty sure your clients have seen tremendous goals. What are you yeah. most proud of, like, in uh, as a coach? What's your uniqueness? I don't think it's I mean, a matter of from, from the listeners, you you might have a client, so. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see persons as they are whole and complete within themselves, mm. but sometimes they just need a little help to find the direction that they need. So when they come. Active listening to me is very important. My philosophy is if you take time to listen more than how we speak, we will learn so much more about a person. And I have found that actively listening to people, being present in the moment, practicing mindfulness in being that moment with them, you can learn so much about them, their body language, the way they they speak, the way they dress. If you take, take, take that time to observe them in that space, you'll find about who they are and you'll help them to find who they really are and what they really, what they really want and who they really want to become. Correct. You'll find it. Right. Uh, that's, that's good. That's good. Listening more, more effectively. You need to like, you really listen yes. and that's nice. And now I'm, I'm always thinking, this is my curiosity for a long time. I mean, like those, uh, how do they call them? Uh, psychologists or so on and so on. Oh, those people, as you are a coach, I, I'm sure people explain their problems to you first and they narrate their life and so on. I mean, when I try to listen to people, yes, I like to actively listen and I do try to come up with solutions or try to advise somehow. But now I wonder, as your line of work, this is out of curiosity. Don't you like get tired of listening and sometimes your mind wandering off and you miss a point? <laughs> Let I always you. think this because I mean, I always <laughs> see these coaches or whatever the counselors, they listen for long, someone ranting and ranting and ranting. And I mean, do you grab everything? <clears throat> Sometimes when a person comes to you and they say they have this problem, mm. that's not really the problem that they have. They just think that's a problem. Mm. But for me, <clears throat> this is where mindfulness comes in. Correct. If I find myself, because I'm a human. Mm -hmm. my mind is going to wander. I bring myself back into the moment. Mm. I make sure <clears throat> that um, I have no, no distractions around me. And this is what we do. We listen. We listen because when we listen, we find what you have not said, what you mm. are not saying. So we have to spend that time. And it happens as you, as you coach. Mm. And, you, and as you become a better coach, you, um, over the years you mature, you upskill, mm. you become better mm. at listening for longer periods of time. Correct. And when you do that, you recognize this is not actually a problem. 
that they're describing. There's that's not the problem. There's so much more, yeah. you know. Yeah. So it takes practice. It takes deliberate um, actions to be mindful in that moment. To bring your mind back into the present moment mm -hmm. where you are with that individual so that you can hear what they are saying and what, and what they are not saying so that you'll be able to guide them accordingly. Mm -hmm. And the most effective um, item, I think, for me as a coach is listening to what they are not saying mm -hmm. than to what they're saying. Those persons can come to you and they say a lot of stuff, but that's not what they're really saying. We are biased. We are biased. <laughs> you have to listen carefully mm. to hear what they are not saying. Right. And then you have to ask the questions to get them to say what they didn't want to say or what they have been avoiding over time. Right. Peeling back the layers to find out what are you really saying. Okay. That's, that's and then, nice. you, then the work starts. Mm. The real work begins. And that many clients don't want to do the real work. Mm -hmm. So they come to you with this issue, but then that's not the real issue that they are facing. There's, there's, there's something more. There's something more. They just can't see it. Or they choose not to see it. Yes. They choose not to see it. <laughs> okay. Uh, that that brings me to 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 the point where you say the real work begins. So, what <clears throat> what has been the rewarding moments of being a coach so far? Mm. What are the most uh, wow. amazing things that you feel? Huh? Being a coach is uh, is the greatest endeavor I have I had. Spending time with women mm. who thought that their lives were over, thought that they were too broken. You know, mm. living in, in regret and loss. Right. Spending time to just mm. be present with them. Because because sometimes they just want you to just be present. Right. And they pour out their entire hearts to you. Right. And um, after a series of sessions, seeing them smile. Right. As if they have been awakened from this dream and seeing them visibly change before your eyes, right. becoming a, a new person. And at the sessions, right. you hear them say, Jennifer, you have made my life worthwhile. Thank you That's for nice. just being there for me and that makes my role as a coach rewarding to hear and to see the the, the the change the transformation beginning in their lives and to see where they too have become inspired and empowered and they want to help other persons too because i don't i i i believe in the ripple effect mm. I believe if I help one person, that person is going to help somebody else and then it continues. It continues. Yeah. You know, it doesn't just stop there. It mm. continues. Mm. So in my coaching, my coaching causes ripple effects. My books, my virtual book tours, my webinars, they are all um, causing ripples in the water in people's lives, empowering people beyond what I can imagine and healing, healing people. And I am so grateful to have the, 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 the opportunity to be able to touch people's lives like that. Yeah. That's very it's good. rewarding. It's very rewarding for me. It resonates uh, from the book of Ikigai. When yes. they tell you when you discover yes. your Ikigai, uh, it, it gives you the uh, the highest fulfillment that you 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 as you you mm -hmm. can ever go for and mm -hmm. you'll never retire from that because mm -hmm. each new day is 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 a joy is a greater mm -hmm. joy for because you're doing what you love and that's very nice that's very nice now considering someone going to uh, transform global services dot mm -hmm. which is your website right mm -hmm. 
and they want to book maybe a service or they want to uh, hire a coach such as yourself or they want to contact you let's say what would be the best advice that you give to a person who is considering hiring a coach such as yourself because i mean as you said people perhaps choose to not see some problems mm-hmm. but then they need to there are people like you professionally who help people now see those problems so what should someone maybe consider in hiring a coach i think um, this is the part where you market your your coaching <laughs> at the same time <laughs> it is the best gift you could ever give to yourself mm. because we all need help i need help i have a coach i have a mentor mm. we all need help we all need to reach out to people to you know sometimes when we when we speak about the issues that we're facing we recognize hey you know i i can overcome this right i can push past this but when we're in the moment and we keep our, our mouth shut and we're there and we can become depressed and all that we don't see that there's hope mm. speaking to a coach a counselor a therapist is the best gift you could ever give to yourself because there in those sessions you'll find clarity you gain insights you become inspired you begin to break limiting mindsets you begin to evolve and that's right. what we are trained to do we mm. are trained to help you to become the best version of yourself so it's a it's it's a great investment right and i would recommend hiring a coach a counselor a therapist yes definitely it is worthwhile it is and i have found that <clears throat> for 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 my coach she has led me along a, a wonderful journey a journey in in terms of me seeing my limiting mindsets mm. on becoming other parts of me and helping other people to do the same and of course we need we need accountability we need persons who we can um call up and say i am going through this and i need your help i need to work through this that's what we we help you to do you know and um it's rewarding it is rewarding and it's the best best gift you could ever give to yourself so the transform global services we are there for you transforming lives coaching center we are there for you transform leadership foundation we are there for you we rise together building bridges transforming lives transforming yes. lives that's very good building bridges transforming life mm-hmm. and now i want to talk about the, the the river beneath the bridge i'm about <laughs> to talk about uh i want to uh to think or oh, you help me think out loud what are some of the maybe limiting beliefs before all of this all of this wanting to go on this journey and all these exercises or tools that we can we can we need to question ourselves and so on what may be the over uh, limiting beliefs to someone attaining their full potential generally for 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 most person that persons that i have encountered mm. they they think i'm not worth it i'm not worth it because mm. of past experiences right um unforgiveness yeah some persons are angry too they have um childhood trauma yes um and they think i'm not worth it i i can't do this this is beyond me i'm not capable of doing this and um those limiting beliefs keep us enslaved they shackle us to who we were <clears throat> and prohibit us from from rising out of that and saying i am worth it i can do this 
I can evolve, I can become a better version of myself. Right. You know, mm. and um, then there's a work that it takes. You have to want it badly enough. You have to want to be transformed badly enough. Right. How much does this mean to you, really? How much do you want this? How much do you want change? And you have to be determined to do the work to the, the work that it takes to to evolve. And there are some painful moments. There are some painful, painful moments. But when you begin the work, you begin to see yourself being healed. You begin to see yourself evolving. And if you continue to, uh, you know, continue on that path, right. you will become that butterfly. You will. But you have to break those limiting beliefs from your culture, from your past, from other people's expectations, or other person's words and actions. Those items. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm getting that... Uh... Things such as, you know, the, the, you said everything starts with your mind. So yes. the thought of unworthiness, uh, mm-hmm. unworthiness is the one that pushes you, pushes people not to achieve their full potential. Always mm-hmm. thinking that you don't deserve it or yeah. you, you are not enough. Yeah. And especially, I think this one happens most, especially with even relationships where yes. you feel like without the other person, you're, you're nothing or mm-hmm. you can't do it on your own. And also at the same time, you, you say some past traumas can also be uh, one of the issues that is limiting people from reaching their full potential. And yeah. it all contributes to, you know, to the thoughts. Now, when you have past traumas, it keeps uh, telling you, you're not enough you're not enough you can't do mm-hmm. that i'm mm-hmm. sure it's, it's that they usually say uh, in church the devil is always there at, at the <laughs> back of your mind telling you you remember remember yes 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 you mm-hmm. can't do that mm-hmm. yeah so and this, yeah i think the other thing that I, I like that you mentioned is although it is a challenge but when we learn to overcome it it will be a great thing and i think in one of the videos i talked about it is uh not uh the unwillingness to forgive yourself mm-hmm. or the readiness to forgive yourself especially mm-hmm. we we usually seem to look outside outwards and we don't see inwards we only the see oh, stars, yeah. we need to forgive people and so on but do you really forgive yourself mm-hmm. especially for the things that are out of your control correct Definitely. And I have a workbook coming out on forgiveness because I really believe mm. that healing begins when we forgive ourselves. And many persons are stuck at that that in that stage of of not forgiving mm. what they have done in the past. Mm. And so they think that I can't move on from here. I'm not worthy. I can't do this because I did this before. But you are not your past. You are not your past. You can overcome that. You can live and you can uh, allow that to to propel you into helping other persons. I grew up in a very, very poor community. My family was very, very poor. And I grew up as being an outside of what my my neighbors because they had this and they had it and we didn't have it mm-hmm. and i grew up with this mentality that that i would always be like that mm-hmm. and i didn't deserve anything more and poverty was a part of my life but then i began to read all these books and by reading my imagination became developed and i and i started believing that i could i could become better i don't have to stay in this restriction. I don't have to be like everybody else. I can become different. And I've made so many mistakes in my past. And, um, but forgiving myself, Christ taught me how to forgive myself. And so now I want to help women. I want to help persons to forgive themselves first. So you can 
you know, you can forgive others and you can move on and you can help and inspire others as well. It's a process. That's very nice. Uh, the other thing that you mentioned, and I, I think I got it in, in, in a plus aspect is one of the, one of the other limiting factors is the lack of the great desire, the grit, what like wanting mm. to really win it. Tenacity. And, and even if we have it, we don't have that intention. We might lose the intentionality. Like you, you, you say you want something, but you're not willing to, you know, make the do choice. The yeah, yeah, do the work. Mm -hmm. And I think to that again, if even if you have that, again, you you might lack consistency to to the to the to the work. As you say, you can't do the work. You don't. You're not willing to invest the consistency. So I I think um. Hmm. I'm learning stuff I, from you. I, again, how much do you want this? Mm. How badly do you want this? How badly do you want this? Yeah. That's what very does it good. mean to you? Dear listeners, if you're still there, if you're still listening to the podcast, this is the Self Seed Podcast. And today is episode 11. And we are with Jennifer Richards, who is a transformation coach. And she has taught us a lot and she will continue teaching us more and more and more and more. And if you are at this point, remember that the Self Seed Podcast is brought to you by Aussie. And do remember to go to www.aussiegroup.com to understand and learn more about Aussie Outdoor Products uh, Services Company Limited. And Jennifer, I just want to, to, to invite you at this point and ask you what message can you leave to the audience we're almost at the end and i just want to hear what message can you leave to someone who is listening to you either uh, who is already on a journey who wants to start the journey or i don't know they lost somewhere what message can you leave to the audience you are not lost you're not lost at all. There mm. is hope. Right. Hope is fierce. Hope is fierce. Right. Believe that you are worth it. Believe that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are loved by a supreme God who has created you for a wonderful purpose in him. Nothing that you have gone through is, is loss. It is all for his glory. It is all to enable you to become a, a, a better person. So you are worth it. You are loved. You are beautiful. You are talented. Allow the work to be done in your life right. to transform you into that butterfly to transform you into becoming the best version of yourself. Allow, give yourself some, some space, give yourself some time, give yes. yourself some patience. The same way you can be uh, patient with other people, you need to learn to be patient with yourself, knowing that mm -hmm. the time will come. That time will really reach once you put it in will. the work. It will. Have faith that there is a greater God helping you, listening to you, guiding you. There's a greater construct out yes. there. So keep at it and just intentionally keep uh, seeking that growth that you need to see. Mm -hmm. And uh, at the, at the, as, the, as the last uh, junction of uh, our conversation today, uh, I would like to invite you Maybe listeners now want to connect with you. I mean, you have shared a lot of stuff. I have grabbed a lot of stuff, especially the reframing part. Guys, you need to reframe, reframe how you see things. Yes. Uh, and once you, once you say you want something, you need to really show how bad you want it because it is um, commitment and consistency is what differentiates champions from the regular people. Mm -hmm. So how can listen can the listeners now connect with you or your works? For mm -hmm. someone, let's say, needing to uh, a transformation coach or uh, your services? 
I think this yes. is the way is the place where I like to say the field is yours. Just <laughs> share with us uh, oh, any wow. useful ways that we can connect with you. You're welcome. Yes, my website is the Transform Global Services at podia.com and there you can see the vast amount of programs and items that I have been conducting over the past couple of years. Right. I also have my books and coaching programs on Linktree, Activate Core. My company's legal name is Activate Core. Mm -hmm. And again, the word core, what you're really made of, tenacity, mm. yes, purpose. Mm. Yes, you can find me on that as well. And I'm on WeChat. Um, I have a group called Hello Hope where we build bridges, you know, to transform lives. Right. I have groups on WhatsApp as well, mm. because again, I have a diverse portfolio and um, I'm here in the community. I'm here in most, most communities. You can find me. Let's talk. Let's have the conversation. Right. Let's begin the journey. Right. It is a journey, but it's a wonderful journey. And the journey, of course, continues. Allow yourself to start this journey. Continue this journey. Say to yourself, I am not going to give up. I need to do this for me. I need to do this and I can become who I'm meant to become, who I'm meant to be. Right. So you can find me there. So as, as we already know, uh, we are the self seed podcast believe that we are your friend in personal development and mm -hmm. today we just added to your list another friend who is willing to hold your hand is willing to take you along on that journey of growth and she just reminded us that you should allow yourself to go on that journey of uh, personal transformation personal development mm -hmm. the journey of growth moving from a caterpillar to a butterfly allow yourself to go through that process and uh i believe there's a good end result once you go on that journey mm -hmm. and remember that you're not alone when you feel lost uh someone to hold your hand to show you that there is growth there is the light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. is very useful so be sure to invest in finding a coach especially at transformglobalservices.podia.com. And you can connect with Jennifer Richards and she can help you go on that journey. Thank you very much, Jennifer, Thank for being you, part of this man. podcast. Thank you for, share, uh, for sharing awesome insights with me because I, I, I like to, uh, to let the uh, speaker know that at least if you don't think anybody was listening, I was listening. <laughs> So thank you so much for sharing awesome thank insights for and me. for allowing us to learn more from you. Mm. Thank you for being part of it. The journey continues. Darling. Yeah, the journey continues. Yeah. The journey continues. Yeah. Listeners, this is the po Self Seed Podcast, Season 3, Episode 11. And today we were with Jennifer Richards, where we were unlocking transformation. Until next time, take care. And I hope to hear from you remember to let me know what you think about the episode and what you think about jennifer's thoughts and if you have any additional questions i will it will be my pleasure to deliver the questions if you cannot reach to her directly but i mean she has provided the ways that you can reach her so until next time keep growing and keep going on that cycle of transformation bye bye